أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا الشمس كورت وإذا النجوم كدرت وإذا الجبال سيرت وإذا العشاء عطلت وإذا الوحوش حشرت وإذا البحار سجرت وإذا النفوس زوجت وإذا الموؤودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت وإذا الصحف نشرت وإذا السماء كشطت وإذا الجحيم سعرت وإذا الجنة أزلفت علمت نفس ما أحضرت فلا أقسم بالخنس الجوار الكنس والليل إذا عسعس والصبح إذا تنفس إنه لقول رسول كريم ذي قوة عند ذي العرش مكين مطاع ثم أمين وما صاحبكم بمجنون ولقد رآه بالأفق المبين وما هو على الغيب بضنين وما هو بقول شيطان رجيم فأين تذهبون إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين لمن شاء وما تشاءون إلا أن يشاء الله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We always commence by praising Allah The maker, the nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer The one who is in absolute control of every aspect of our existence we always praise him and no matter how much we praise him, we will never, never be able to do justice to what is his status. May Allah accept it from us. May he send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah bless them all and bless those who have struggled over the generations to bring this deen to us. And may every one of us be blessed. My beloved mothers, brothers and sisters, the most important day ever shall be the day of reckoning. That's the most important day ever. So many things happen in our lives that we sometimes feel we cannot do much about. People say things about us, they oppress us. Sometimes we can get justice in this world. But this world, as you know, is an unfair place. Sometimes we find that we are unable to achieve justice and we have to leave certain things for another time. And although we have been teaching one another to say, learn to forgive one another, but sometimes human nature makes a person say, we'll sort this matter on the day of judgment. I'm sure we've heard this happening. We will sort this matter on the day of judgment. Remember, it's a very, very big day. It is such a big day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described its time span as being 50,000 years of the years we know in this world will be only that one day. So if you are to ask me how long is the day of judgment or the day of resurrection, I will have to tell you that 50,000 years of this world's years, 50,000 years. So imagine right now we are in the year 2020. That means 2020 from a certain time. Imagine how long that 2000 years 
is according to the Hijra calendar 1435 1435 years here we are talking of 50,000 years that's the description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so it is very important what will happen on that day well I tell you what will happen all of us shall present our deeds the accounts we have every droplet every deed you've done the Almighty will take into record and this is why Allah says when the book shall be brought forward those who were criminals those who were bad they will say what's wrong with this book every single thing small and big is in account it is here it is actually recorded completely how is this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely respond the response will be that there is no oppression today your Rabb your maker will not oppress you now obviously many of us when we think of this day it is a day that is going to be very serious because that is the day of accounts you know if I were to tell you that you studied for 20 years you have your final qualifying examination final exam and you are now at university say you are becoming an accountant and you have the FQE or whatever other major exam it is and you are so worried and so stressed it's your big day major so much so you arrive early you make sure everything you've learned well you make sure you've done as best as possible and then you go forth and you put whatever you have it is a day of examination and then you would like to see what you've done how you've done so the day of judgment the examination of life comes to an end and what happens it is presented to you in the form of results people will get their books on the right hand and others will be getting it on the left hand and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the joy of those who receive their books on the right now why will this be let me tell you there will be a scale that scale will weigh your deeds one might ask how will your deeds be weighed well whether they are weighed in megabytes gigabytes terabytes or whatever else or kilograms or anything that's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know a long time ago people would say my deeds would fulfill or would fill books and books and encyclopedias full and how are they going to be when they come in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today we have a small chip one terabyte and one terabyte they tell you it can fill three and a half thousand libraries the size of the biggest library on earth of not only books but of images whoa or script wise sorry so many thousand libraries script wise imagine so how Allah will do it we have to stop where his explanation stops because we don't know but he is the boss he is the maker he is the one in charge he will do may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease on that day the Prophet peace be upon him used to always make a dua he used to always pray oh Allah make it easy for us on the day of judgment and so on these are some prayers we need to supplicate with so when the scales of justice shall be put forth everyone's deeds will be put on the scales the good deeds on the right side the bad deeds on the left and what will happen the scales start weighing they tip onto one side which side will they tip onto if they tip onto the right side you are fortunate you are lucky you have more good deeds than bad the Almighty's mercy dictates that in that case if we will we have mercy on you we ignore that which is bad because you did more good than bad and we just let it go you can go into paradise as for the one whose right side of the scale is heavy he will be in a beautiful or a very pleasing life thereafter I'm sure we've learned the surah many of us would know it off by heart and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes thereafter how the one who receives the book on the right side is so excited like a little child 
فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فيقول ها أمقرأوا كتابي As for the one who receives his book on the right hand, he will say, hey, behold, read my book, check my results, look at what I have. Wow. It always reminds me of a little child running back, grade one or grade two, mom, see my report, when you've done well. And when you haven't done well, we didn't get a report this time. I don't know, where did it go? What happened? You sure? You'll have to phone the school and find out. Perhaps your child is too embarrassed. And this is why Allah says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ As for the one who got the book on the left, they will say, we hope that we did not receive our books. We hope we did not receive our book. And we hope we had died. Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, it is pouring outside. And when it is raining, it is the time of acceptance of prayer. So you make a short prayer of forgiveness and goodness. May Allah forgive us all, grant us goodness and create ease for all those who are suffering across the globe. Really, we ask the Almighty to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness. And everyone who has difficulties, every form of difficulty that we do have, may the Almighty make it easy for you. You will have to be listening a little bit more attentively because obviously we have barakah from the top as well. MashaAllah. May Allah have mercy on us the day He takes us away. And may He have mercy on us the day we are faced with the scales, the day of resurrection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes how heaven and hell shall be brought close. And those who would like to get to heaven will have to pass through a certain bridge. Not as thin as this yellow partition that we have here, but even thinner than a hair. They have to pass through the bridge. And what will happen? Anyone who has had good deeds and tried their best will be able to cross the bridge flash like a flash of lightning. They get to the other side. And as for those who have had bad, bad deeds, what happens? They will not be able to cross that bridge properly. And they may slip. And if they slip or they are sliced by that, they will fall into hellfire. May Allah safeguard us. Hellfire is real. It is something we need to talk about once in a while. We need to remind ourselves that there is hellfire. It is something very serious. And when people fall in, there are two types of people who will fall into hellfire. One, those who worship none besides their maker, but they have had bad deeds that they have not repented from. Remember, if you have worshipped none but Allah, He may overlook all your other deeds. It's possible. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah will not forgive those who associate partners with Him. But besides that, He may forgive everything and anything else. That is Allah. So a person who has bad deeds, but yet they worshipped Allah alone, they stand a great chance of being forgiven. All the other deeds wiped out. But there will be others, may Allah not make us from amongst them, who might slip into hellfire. And in hellfire, there is that which is quite difficult to describe, because it is so painful, and there is so much torment. It is worse than just an ordinary prison. It is a sentence that people would be serving for the evil that they have done. When a person does evil in this world, they go to jail. The people of Singapore know what that means. Someone has made a mistake, you go to jail, you are penalized, you are punished, you get a fine. Something has to happen to make you feel that, you know what, I did wrong. So just the same rule applies with the Almighty, only that in a lot of cases, maybe in most cases, He will just forgive. He says, okay, it's okay, carry on, you can go to heaven. Allahu Akbar. This is why I always say, do more good deeds than bad. Make sure that you've done good deeds. The hadith says, أَتْبِئِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا if you want to wipe out your bad deeds, follow them up with good deeds. And when you do good deeds, they will wipe out the bad deeds. Something unique, something amazing. Imagine you went through one red traffic light and the next time you stop at a red traffic light. And suddenly you're forgiven for the previous one. Oh, mashallah, that doesn't happen here. But Allah says, no, we are most merciful. 
We know Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most merciful, most forgiving, most merciful, most beneficent. This is the unique quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He forgives knowing that he is able to punish. He forgives, he overlooks. And if you have that quality, then it is amazing. The Almighty may forgive you too. In fact, he will because you have a quality of forgiveness. Like Allah tells Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiyallahu anhu, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them all. Allah says, when his daughter was accused of adultery, the wife, the wife of Muhammad, may peace be upon him, Aisha, radiyallahu anha. And Abu Bakr as-Siddiq said, this man that I am spending money on, he's a relative of mine and he's poor, and he's busy accusing my daughter, and he's busy spreading tales, I'm never going to spend on him again. Wallahi, I promise I'm not going to spend on him again. And Allah revealed verses to say, no, those who are good and kind, those whom Allah has blessed with so much, open your heart out a little bit, learn to forgive. Don't you want to achieve the forgiveness of Allah? أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَن يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Don't you want Allah to forgive you as well? So if you want it to happen quickly, learn to forgive others who have wronged you. This is why we constantly say, brother, sister, forgive them. I said it yesterday, I think I said it earlier today as well. Learn to forgive, forgive them. Carry on, you will, have, you will lead a better life. You have a much more content life. You are such a happy man. Why? Because you learn to forgive. Subhanallah. May Allah bless us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who have committed sin, but they have worshipped me alone, it's up to me what I do with them. And he has issued a stern warning against those who have associated partnership with him. And you know what? If a person falls into hellfire, he either serves a sentence and comes out because he has even a droplet of belief in him. Do you know the narration says a person who has a droplet of belief in them will not remain in hellfire. They have to come out one day because that droplet of belief is something that will show that they came on the earth. Like I said this morning, they, they might have not done well in the examination, but at least they had the root, the foundation was there. They have some form of a certificate. So they come out. And we're going to go through one of the last people who come out of this hell. But we'd like to be from amongst those who sail across like a flash. Beautiful, you're gone, straight through. May Allah grant that to us. May He make us from those who pass. We ask Allah to grant us paradise without reckoning. No reckoning because there are 70,000 people from one group, there are so many different other people who will go into heaven without reckoning. But 70,000 who will go together as a specific group that go into paradise and subhanallah, they amazingly will enter without reckoning. So there are some people who will go on the day of judgment and Allah says, you guys are VIPs. We're not, no reckoning here. You can walk straight through. Allahu Akbar. You know, when you go to an airport, and you go through security, everybody goes through security. You can be big or small. But if you're the president of a country and it's your own plane that you're going to go and be going into, I think you walk straight through. In fact, those with you are checked, but not you. You walk straight. Why? You're a V, 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 IP. MashaAllah. What about the day of judgment? Imagine, in this world, people thought you were bad. They, they laughed at you. They scoffed at you. But you had good deeds. You reached out to people. You worshipped Allah alone. You dressed appropriately. You tried your best. You fulfilled your prayers on time. You tried. You know, you always asked Allah's forgiveness. You went on the ground and cried to Allah. Oh Allah, I'm weak. I'm human. Forgive me. Grant me goodness. Grant me an opening. Oh Allah, help me in every single way. And we continue praying and continue praying. And then Allah says, I love you so much. And you know what? You're going to be a VIP. And I want you to understand on the day of judgment, you will have a shade. And not only that, I'm going to let you enter paradise without reckoning. No reckoning. We don't even want to look at your deeds. Subhanallah. Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those say Ameen. I'm really worried about the day I have to face my maker, all my deeds. Imagine how embarrassed I will be. I cannot hide. Everything will be there. But Allah says, if you want to hide things, all you need to do is engage in sincere repentance before you've died. The problem is, I don't know when I'm going to die. 
And if I knew when I was going to die, we would probably do bad deeds up to the last minute and then we would say Allahu Akbar and wait to die. That's why this morning there was a question I wanted to ask and here I've got the opportunity and that is, if you were asked, when do you want to die and how do you want to die? What would you say? Please think very hard about this question tonight. If Allah, if you were to be asked, when do you want to die? At what age? And how do you want to die? What would you say? Because we don't have an answer, Allah says, I do you the favor I choose. When you're going to die and how you're going to die. But if you think carefully about it, it's the mercy of Allah that dictates when and how. He knows. Sometimes you have a person who dies in such a gruesome way, but Allah knows that that was the best for them. They had to go. The soul was out. We busy feeling so sorry because we are human beings, but we don't realize if you meet the person, they'll say, hey, that was the best ever that could happen. You know, the narration says those who were sick in this world and they had prolonged sickness and illness and they endured it and they were still happy with the decree of Allah. They tried to achieve whatever medication they could, but they died as a result or even if they did not die as a result, but they were enduring. When they see the reward of endurance on the day of judgment, they will say, Oh my Lord, why didn't you keep me sick for longer? I would have at least achieved such a big reward. I would have doubled and tripled this reward. What a great achievement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us endure. So he puts obstacles in your life and mine to make it easier to earn paradise. So he says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtalah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, When Allah loves you, he tests you more. He gives you bigger tests. So you have a bigger certificate. Other people were only tested one plus one. I was tested multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, algebra, and everything else. Subhanallah. And I passed my test. So be calm, relax. You have a major test. You know, you have a child maybe who's not as normal as the other children. That's your miracle. That's your paradise. In fact, you have a situation where you cannot get children. You cannot have children because Allah's not giving you. You try and if you are patient with it, that is your paradise. You will sail through when everybody else is busy standing and you sailing through. They're wondering, hey, what's happening here? Yes, she was very patient when we did not give her a child. So she deserves this today. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant children to those who don't have. Same applies to sickness and illness and so many other things. So the day of judgment, such a serious day. Here is hellfire. We have people who will be drinking their own juices that have come out after being burnt and roasted. When you burn a chicken on a braai or a flame, what happens is sometimes the chicken begins to drip and you find a little bit of that, you know, fat becoming liquid form and thereafter it's burnt in the fire. What a description. What a description. We have to say it. You won't hear me saying this so often, but today I was asked to describe it slightly, at least touch, go near it. I feel the heat already, to be honest with you. May Allah grant us goodness. May Allah protect us from this. It is real. And this is why the narration says, the evil people will be treated in a way befitting to what they have been working towards all along. I am working towards paradise, although I am weak, and I try my best in this world that we know is a big challenge. It's a bigger challenge than ever before to live as a Muslim on this globe. But I'm trying and I hope that I earn paradise. Every day I try to pray properly and I try to ensure that my concentration is there. I try not to do those things that are prohibited and I try my best to ask Allah's forgiveness and to get onto the ground and say, my maker, I love you. I really do. I really thank you for whatever you've given me. I'm weak, forgive me. On that day, don't let the fire touch me. He hears you. He knows you asked that. And he knows you asked it genuinely. And by his mercy, he will give it to you. May Allah grant it to us. It's so serious that it's hard to describe Jahannam. And Allah says it will be filled. And you know what? When, it, when the people get into it and they start burning, they actually become much smaller in volume. Because of them, when you burn a whole lot of logs, they become ash. And the ash you can gather in one small bag. So Allah says, on that day, it might seem that Jahannam is actually filling up. But no, we will ask it a question. On that day, we will ask hellfire, are you full? And hellfire will say, no, is there any more? Are there more to come? May Allah not make us from those.
And you know, Allah is so merciful. Every time He speaks about hellfire and the description of hellfire is there, He always, always, every single time in the Quran, He makes mention of heaven. He makes mention of goodness either before that or immediately after that. And He says, hey, you heard about what's going to happen to the bad people. Well, now listen to what's going to happen to the good people. And this is why the last person who will be in hellfire, who's going to come out of there, going into Jannah, he will be a person who served his sentence and he will be praying, Oh Allah, take me out of here. Oh Allah, take me out of here. Oh Allah, even if I just come out of it into the side, you know, just come out of it, grant that to me, it's the last thing I want. I don't want to be burning here. And after some time, Allah will grant him the, his wish. So he comes out and he's just outside of Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. Now this is the worst from amongst us. The worst. The last person, everyone else already in paradise. May Allah make us from there quick, inshallah, early. And so, as he comes out, later on, a while later, he will see a tree at a distance. And you know, he's enjoying, oh, I'm out of this place. And he's enjoying, he sees a tree at a distance. And he says, Almighty, I just need the shade of that tree. That's all. After all. And Allah says, but didn't you tell me that... This is the last thing you wanted was to come out of hell. And that's it. I don't need anything else. I promise nothing more I'm going to ask for. He says, yeah, but you know, I, now, now I won't ask you for anything else. It's the tree, just the shade. So he gets the shade of the tree. And this hadith carries on describing so many different things. He says, that's the last thing. And a while later, he sees something else. And he says, ya Allah, let me just get close to that. He sees the door of Jannah. He says, oh Allah, let me just be by the door. By the door. By the door. Allah says, but didn't you promise that that was the last thing you asked? He says, yeah, but you know, ya Allah, I just need to get near the, to the door. And he gets there. And then he gets the scent that comes from inside. And he says, oh Allah, you know, even if it's just inside the door, just inside, you know, ya Allah, grant it to me. And Allah says, but... Didn't you promise that was the last thing you wanted? Okay, let's tell you something. Allah says to him, Would you be happy if we gave you whatever was on earth completely? Multiplied by two, multiplied by three, in fact to the power three, four, five, six. Would you like for us to give it to you double? He says, oh, that would be excellent, brilliant. Wow, subhanallah, I haven't even asked for it. Would you want us to give it to you triple? Meaning the whole world, whatever was in it. Imagine the gold, the platinum, the this, the that. I hope there's no Facebook and Twitter there, inshallah. Okay. Whatever else, whatever else. So multiplied by 10. But obviously this is on a much higher level. This is only a description. So he says, yes, I'd be happy with it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so you can have that multiplied, 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 tenfold, all yours and only for you. Enter paradise and the door is open for him. And everything is his. In it will be Anything that your soul desires, you have it as you want it, how you want it, and every other description that you desire, it's yours. So when people say, my husband, not good enough, you will be shocked and surprised when you see the description you want, the thinking you want, that everything you want. And I always give a beautiful example to say, as your mind changes, we are taught that whatever you want is actually just adjusting itself as you want it. You know, you like, what do you want? Slightly taller, slightly shorter, this way, that way, okay, this type of hair, that type of eyes, this type, and it's changing as you're thinking. And then, bing, stops here. And after a while, you're thinking, hey, hang on, I could change this. And suddenly it starts changing in front of you. Or should I say, he starts changing in front of you. Oh. Or maybe she, the other way around. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows exactly how. But He has promised us to say, you will never ever be displeased. What is coming is something you will definitely appreciate to the highest degree. So stop fighting over it here. Like people say, that you know, when I go to heaven, I want to have this and that, and I'm going to have my own palace and my own aircraft. And I think to myself, I tell them, Subhanallah, there's going to be, if there are aircraft in this world, they don't qualify to come into the heaven because the world, this, 
is made of steel and tin and that is from the earth. When Allah speaks of gold and silver in heaven, it's different from the gold and silver here, completely different. So we need to understand this. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that in heaven will be that which no eye has ever seen, no, no mind has ever thought of, no ears have ever heard, not at all, never heard. And so subhanallah, if it has crossed your mind in this world, it will not be there in heaven. It will not be there in heaven. If it has crossed your mind in this world, something better than that will be there. Completely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us. And then you ask, how many years do you live in heaven for? How many years? Well, the question is eternity. So if I were to meet you not 2020 years later, not 1435 years later, but if I were to meet you a billion years later, number one is, I wouldn't even be asking you, how long have you been here for? But if I did, you would say, I'm here for a billion years so far. One billion, okay? And how long is left? Well, we're only starting. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Which means it's eternity. It's nothing. Time is gone. In fact, the billion years also is irrelevant. I'm only giving it to you as an example. Now one might ask, so how long is each day going to be when we get to heaven? Well, when we get to heaven, each day is equivalent to 1,000 years of the years we count here. The day of judgment, 50,000 years, we spoke about that. But the heaven itself and the afterlife itself, every day is equivalent to 1,000 years. وَإِنَّ يَوْمًا عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ كَأَلْفِ سَنَةٍ مِمَّا تَعُدُّونَ and indeed, one day with your Lord is equivalent to a thousand years from those years that you count. This is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, let me give you a little bit of hope. You know, on that day, the description, in fact, the verses I read at the beginning, describe the end. Describe how the functions of the sun and the moon and the mountains and everything else come to an end and Allah will extinguish them one by one and destroy them completely. Everything comes to an end and I'm sure we've heard about that through the day today. And those were the verses and Allah then speaks of those who are successful and the successful are those who tried hard in this life. Try hard to be a good person, someone who obeys instructions of Allah. We are subservient to our own maker. But sometimes we lose a bit of hope when we hear about hellfire and we hear about how people will be burning and how bad it is. The hadith says, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر The person in whose heart there is a mustard seed's weight worth of pride does not qualify to enter paradise. You have pride in your heart, you don't qualify to enter paradise. You must go first to burn that pride out. How do you burn it out? Well, you know where people are going. May Allah protect us. This is why we safeguard ourselves from pride. Believe me, it's something dangerous. It's something serious. Don't be arrogant. No matter what you've been given, you are a human being like everyone else. And you need to understand this. No matter what you have, you are one of the rest. You also are in desperate need of paradise, just like everybody else. You know, when we look at people who are, mashallah, scholars or someone who's religious outwardly and so on, we, we tend to feel, oh, these people are going to paradise first. But we don't realize by right, they should be worried about paradise and they probably are and would be more than us. They worried, am I going to go to heaven or not? Really? And I cry to Allah and we should be crying to Allah. Oh Allah, grant me paradise. Don't disgrace me on that day. Allah says, no, no worries. You don't have to worry. If you were worshipping me alone, you asked for forgiveness. You were trying your best to be as best as you could. You don't need to worry. So the hadith says, there comes a man on the day of judgment. This is known as the hadith of the card. The card. Bitaqa. A card. Comes a man on the day of judgment and he is shown his deeds. MashaAllah. And his deeds are made up of 99 files full of bad deeds. Each file, the beginning is not seen and the end is not seen. From the east to the west. Each file, huge, large files. Full of what? Bad deeds. And he's standing in front and imagine every one of us is going to have their deeds and is going to be worried about themselves. يَوْمَ تَأْتِي كُلُّ نَفْسٍ 
تجادل عن نفسها. On the day each soul will be fighting to defend itself. Each soul will be fighting its case, a big court case. Why did you do this deed on this day? If you, you cannot deny it, if you deny it, here it is. Your hands will speak. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون. Allah says on that day, we seal their mouths. Their hands will talk to us. That look, I did this, I touched this, I did that, I stole from here, and I was made to do this and that. That is why when you do things, your organs are telling you, don't do it, I'm going to bear witness against you. You want to uncover yourself, for example, those same organs that you are showing are saying, please cover me. You know what? I don't want to bear witness against you. I will have to. So Allah says, the hands will bear witness, and the legs will bear witness. Tashhadu arjuluhum. The legs will bear witness against you. But there is a way to delete that. You ask for forgiveness. And Allah says, if you seek forgiveness, we make the hands forget, the legs forget, everything forget, the environment forget, everything forgets. And you come as clean as you were. Subhanallah, may Allah grant that to us. So this man comes 99 files and he is asked, these are your deeds. Do you deny any of your deeds? And he says, no, I don't. These are my deeds. I did a lot of bad. Full. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, weigh his deeds, put them on the scale. And I told you they are, there will be a scale, proper scale. How exactly Allah knows, but it's a scale. So the bad deeds are put on one side and you know it's tipping. And suddenly from one of the files, a little card drops out. A little card, small card. What's on the card? On the card it says, this man one day, with conviction in his heart, uttered, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides my maker. And I bear witness that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is his messenger, final messenger. So there is this shahada, we call it the shahada, that he uttered truthfully from his heart once. And it, it falls out of one of the files. And Allah says, put that on the right side. And it is put onto the right side of the scales. And it tips the scale and it's heavier than all those 99 files. And Allah says, my worshipper, for you is paradise, you may enter. Allahu Akbar, may Allah grant that to us. May Allah grant that to us. Imagine, this is a description that Muhammad has given us. This is the hadith of hope. It gives me so much hope to say if I have 99 files of bad deeds, I hope and I pray at least once I have put my head on the ground for the Almighty genuinely. I tell you something. Have you heard of the magicians at the time of Moses? Have you heard of the magicians at the time of the Prophet Moses? May peace be upon him. What did they do? They accepted that their maker alone deserves to be worshipped and that this man who's come is not a magician. He's a prophet of Allah. And they fell prostrate. They put their heads on the ground for Allah. How many times? How many times did they do that? Once. They led a life full of shirk and full of association of partnership with Allah. Bad, evil life, magic, magicians and so on. But they regretted and they dropped prostrate and then they were killed by the Pharaoh. One prostration and Allah says, we forgave them and granted them paradise. They were saved because of one. Ya Allah, I have engaged in hundreds and thousands. I don't even know how many. Ya Allah, accept from me at least one. And I can be from amongst those who are successful. May Allah grant us goodness. Don't you have hope in your heart to say, I try. Don't you try? We all try. We put our head on the ground, not for someone. My maker, oh you who made me, I'm going to come back to you. I worship you. You are the greatest. You are so powerful. I'm going to return to you. Please have mercy on me when I return to you. He heard you. So we want to achieve this paradise by the will of Allah. And we don't want to burn in hell. 
So this is why we need to be people who are good. We believe firmly in accountability, the day of judgment, resurrection. We believe in it. We believe firmly that there is an afterlife and that will be the eternal life where you get whatever you want according to how you want it. Like I said moments ago, if you say, okay, I don't have this here, but I will get it in heaven. You will get something better than that. Because what we have here, think for a moment, what are the most valuable things you can think of in this world? You think of your car, you think of your house, you think of, you know, people, you think of whatever else, beautiful and good and smart and sweet. But at the end of the day, within you, you need to know that heaven has something much better than that. Much higher than that. Subhanallah. I will get something far better. And this is why we say, do not get bogged down. Feeling that the Almighty is unfair. If you don't understand, don't worry. All you need to understand is he is very fair. He will make sure that I'm the happiest person and I have whatever I want. You know, sometimes people read about the Hur, the maidens of paradise. And they say, what is this all about? And how come? And some of the women say, why this and why that? Believe me, the Almighty has something in store for you, for every one of us, that will definitely be such that we have no debate about it. But get there. If you want to fail the test, start arguing here about what you're going to have there. That's when you fail the test. Because in the process of debating, why are we going to get certain things and how we're going to get them and so on? We end up not even going there. So then we are told, well, what was the argument all about? You're not even there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. My brothers and sisters, I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sitting with such dedication and concentration for so many hours for the sake of Allah. I hope we've learned something and I hope inshallah that I've touched a little bit on the topic the day of judgment as well as a little bit of heaven and hell. And as you know, this is only a motivation for you to be able to want to learn more. And you need to do something about it. Don't just think, okay, I went for one day and I learned all about the judgment, the day of judgment and the afterlife and so on. And that's it. No, this will motivate you. If you do not do something about it within 48 hours, you will probably will not do anything about it ever. Right now, you and I are motivated. Make a resolution now, whilst you're sitting, whilst you're hearing, right now. Don't wait for, okay, you know when I finish from here, tomorrow I will do this. Do it now. Say, oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, I'm starting a new leaf. Oh Allah, I really will worship you from this day on. Nothing besides you, I will make sure I purify my worship the way you want it. Because I want to enter paradise. Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the intercession of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And I want to end on this note. You see, there are some VVIPs on the Day of Judgment. They will be given the power to intercede on behalf of others. Like Muhammad, may peace be upon him, the messenger. He will be given the power of intercession where he recognizes the members of his ummah and he will be calling them forth and interceding on their behalf. May Allah make us from amongst those. Ameen. So you ask Allah always, Oh Allah, grant me the intercession of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. But what makes you deserve that intercession? If you tried your best to follow his example and to obey his instruction. Then, but there will come people, as the hadith describes it, some people will come forth and Muhammad, peace be upon him, will recognize the people by the shining of the places they used to wash five times a day when they were making their ablution in preparation for prayer. And so what will happen? He will say, Allahumma minni wa min ummati. Oh Allah, this person is from me, from my ummah, from my, you know, let them have paradise. And Allah will say, not this one. You don't know what they did after you left. They turned on their backs. May we not be that embarrassment. May we not be from amongst those who turn backwards. May we be from amongst those who progress every single day in a way that we have this intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.